Tally Hall is a blue rock band that consists of five color-coordinated handsome boys who have grown a very decent following over the years due to multiple viral videos, an internet show, and having a reputation for creating genuinely fun music. <laughs> If you're wondering what a Fablu rock band sounds like, it basically means they don't stick to one specific genre. We used to call ourselves a wonky rock band, but then I think people started to try to characterize exactly what wonkiness was, and we didn't want that to happen. We made up another word. Fablu. We're a Fablu rock band now. So. Fablu is almost too perfect to describe their style. When you first look at it, it just seems like a jumbled mess with too many parts. Just like a marvelous mechanical museum owned by Marvin. But once you listen all the way through the album, you notice a few key things. It's got spunk, it's got plenty of weirdness, it's got enough energy to fuel a rocket to space. Overall, it's a great experience. One thing that stood out to me about this band is the wholesome dynamic between all of the members. Who's the best beatboxer in the group? This guy. Can you give us a little sample, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, was that a man or a snare drum? This includes not only the music which they play, but their interactions outside of the studio. If you guys could be in any movie, which would it be? Oh man, the parent trap. Transformers 9. <laughs> <laughs> We can notice this through several different videos on the archive of Tally Hall's YouTube channel, which include New York City vlogs. Today we're waiting around and we're looking at books and we're talking about things. Skits. Uh... And a series documenting their tour life known as Bora Logs. Oh, I'm Todd. Look at me. I'm doing things on the computer. Oh, oh. Oh, I'm Tony. This sounds good. This has really got a groove to it. With five years worth of content being hidden in the sand on YouTube, this group of individuals have also created several music videos, some of which gained a lot of attention. Which does make a lot of sense since each music video is completely different every single time, but are amazingly crafted since most of them are animated. They are literally the best music videos I have ever seen. That's how good they are. The animator that made these masterpieces is Drew Macris, and was literally the only name I could find as to who animated these masterpieces. Another form of art are their album covers. The perfect example is their first album, which rewards you the more you look at it. In the background, we see Bungval Chongo and his Zimbabwe Songbirds, which is a direct reference to the beginning of the song Banana Man. <laughs> It's also a metaphor for their music to say that each song they create is different from the rest and may borrow from different genres, which tend to happen in the exact same song. Not only is it a metaphor, as well as an album with a dope design, but it's a tribute to a place in their town that's literally called Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum, which gives it more of a personal meaning to the band. Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum is just this collection of the strangest machines you've ever seen and the most entertaining and bizarre and some of them are dark and some of them are hilarious. There's always a very specific thing I'm looking for whenever I'm listening to an album, and that is the transition between songs. Although not a critical thing, if you can make the ending of one song transition perfectly into the beginning of the next song, it's honestly beautiful and shows true talent. Speaking of talent, whoever designed their website was a genius. Yep. That's their website. I just love how simplistic it is. You know, it's a metaphor for how they're a light in this dark world. Oh. Under the logo hides portals of different realms to the internet. We've got the social medias, their internet show made in 2008, Tally Mail, which is basically Tally Hall's comedic Q&A show, photographs, not photographs, their albums on Apple Music, and if you click this, it sends you to two other albums that they've made. In total, they actually have five albums. Besides Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum and Good and Evil, there's three others. In 2005, there was one called the Pingree EP, which is actually the rarest of Tally Hall albums, and has four songs that are specifically only on that album. The other two are Complete Demos, which was made in 2004, and Admittedly Uncomplete Demos, which was made in 2015, has a grand total of 29 songs. On the same page, Page, we see recommendations. In this section, there are some other creative projects made by individual members of the team. This is really cool because it helps my research. <laughs> While only three of the members' projects appear here, there are five members of the band in total. These individuals are Joe Holly, Andrew Horowitz, Ross Fetterman, Zubin Sedki, and Rob Cantor. Red Tie, who's Joe Holly, has made three albums. Joe Holly, Joe Holly, Hawaii Part 2, and Hawaii Part 2, Part 2. My goodness, what is up with these names? Joe Holly, Joe Holly, believe it or not, is a self-titled album. Wow, 
I never knew that. It's very Tally Hall-esque in the sense that it sounds like Fablu Rock and has a lot more rap than Tally Hall. If you're like me and enjoy Tally Hall's weirder songs like Ruler of Everything, Banana Man, and Taken for a Ride, then you'll most likely enjoy his self-titled album since he is the composer of those three songs. Hawaii Part 2 is on the same lines as the self-titled, except there's less rap, and more synth, as well as more traditional instruments like violin and trumpet. According to the Spotify About page, it's a once-in-a-lifetime musical, which I agree with since it's very melodious. Hawaii Part 2 Part 2 is literally the instrumental version of Hawaii Part 2. So that's pretty cool. Green Tie, Andrew Horowitz, created two side projects. The first one is an EP called Sketches. The first two songs have a very whimsical feel to them, contrasted to the last song on the album, which is more of a road trip vibe. The second one is Edu's. This EP has seven songs and is solely piano tunes. It's a little humorous to me how simple this EP is compared to every single creator project we've looked at thus far. Grey Tie, Ross Fetterman, has one side project called Mr. F. This would be his name whenever he DJs and makes mix tapes. He's actually made three of these mixtapes, which are basically mashups of other songs put into one. Blue Tie, Zubin Sedki, has only one side project, Songs About Girls. This is a very old EP made in 2002, and is made under the name Listed Black. These four songs were made with guitar and drums, and include another member of Tally Hall, Rob Cantor, has made six albums, and is my personal favorite out of the five members. What are we setting up, Cameron, Cameron? What are we setting up? Whoa! It's actually more like one album, because five of them are Disney junior albums and I pretend that those don't exist. The one album by Rob is not a trampoline. And to no surprise, it's very Tally Hall-esque. This has also been established in my Music Artist or Genres video. In my research, I've also discovered a few sites that may interest some Tally Hall fans. A YouTube channel called Tally All, which isn't an official channel, but has many songs from the members that you can't find anywhere else. And a forum slash blog called Hidden in the Sand, self-declaimed as the ultimate Tally Hall fan headquarters. Definitely check those out. So. It's been seven years since their last album. Why is there no new album? Well, it's either one of two things. A, it takes them six years to make an album, which isn't a probable choice because that means we would have gotten one in 2017. Or B, Tally Hall is history and each individual member have moved on to their own creative pursuits. While there was never an official announcement to the band's end, I'm not gonna expect anything from them. Since they're all scattered across the states, for one, and most of them already have great careers going for them. Everyone except Zubin has stayed in the musical bubble, even after Tally Hall's second album. Andrew, Joe, and Rob all made their albums, and Ross DJed every once in a while. Andrew and Rob are the ones who have actually made music their careers. Andrew with his ability as a studio musician, and Rob as a songwriter who has made several viral videos. The other three, Joe, Ross, and Zubin, all went back to school. Whether they come back for a third album or not, I'm just happy that this music exists in the world. Whenever I see a creative group of people that find success just by being themselves and not trying to copy anyone else, it's refreshing to see something different in a world full of stereotypes, especially in the music scene. Tally Hall obviously makes the list with flying colors by throwing genre out the window to create something one of a kind and special to not only themselves, but to the thousands of fans that love what they create. It's kind of hard when you're a startup band to know if what you're doing is valid, you're kind of doing it for fun, then all of a sudden somebody says, this has value, and you think, oh, well, I can, there's more where that came from. I think it takes like multiple moments for a band to come into being, but that was the first indication that we had something. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my video, I really appreciate it. It's almost like 3 in the morning, I've been editing this, I, I was editing this like the night before it goes up, so I'm tired. <laughs> I'm so tired, man. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go collapse in my bed now. <laughs>